Welcome to EuroPCR. My name is Tanja Rudolf. I'm an interventional cardiologist from the University of Cologne. And I'm happy to interview today Andreas Rück from the University of Karolinska in Sweden and uh, Helge Möllmann from uh, the hospital in, in Dortmund. We are going to talk about the Cymetris Accurate Neo, a second generation TAVI device. And my first question uh, is going to you, Andreas. Um, could you tell us what is special about this um, TAVI device in comparison to other second generation devices? There are some special features to the implantation technique. Uh, it is a self-expanding device like some others on the market. But this one is deployed from the top down. That means that uh, when you implant the valve, you start to open up something called stabilization arches, uh, which will have the valve stent very stable. And then the step two is to release the part of the stent that's actually then going to cover the annulus. So it's very precise in placement and also quite simple to use in that way. And Hege, you presented the data uh, on the SAVI TF1000 registry. Um, could you just highlight the major findings from this registry? Yes, of course. So the um, Accurate NEO device was granted CMARC in, uh, back in 2014. And um, afterwards, the first 1,000 consented patients were enrolled in a registry, the SAVI TF1000 registry. And we were now able to present um, the 30-day outcome um, which yielded excellent results. So the mortality at 30 days over the 1,000 uh, patient was only 1.3%. And um, this came together with a very, very good rate on PVL, only 4% um, of uh, moderate um, PVL um, rate. And um, perhaps even more important, the pacemaker rate. Um, a lot of people are talking about pacemaker after TAVI procedures. And with the accurate NEO device, um, it was possible to get the, uh, got the lowest um, pacemaker rate, 8.1%, um, which is really uh, more than acceptable um, for a uh, self-expanding device. What is the explanation uh, to have this low pacemaker rate, in particular in the self-expanding valve? I think there are um, different features contributing to the low pacemaker rate. So it's first um, a very um, clever radial force, not too high, not too low. Um, it's uh, the anatomical fit within the annulus. And uh, these two factors are playing together and uh, yield these uh, very, very good pacemaker rate. Mm -hmm. So maybe we come to a clinical experience. So Andreas, uh, what is your experience with implanting the accurate NEO? How many have you done and yes. what is your experience? Uh, I'm a relatively that? new user, so we started half a year ago and we have implanted since then 53 valves. There's been no mortality, there's been very few pacemakers, actually just one out of the 53 had pacemakers and just two had a moderate leak, which might actually then go away during follow-up. So we've been very happy and it has been a very short learning curve, I must say. So you would agree on that, that the learning curve is really flat, so you can uh, easily Yes, you need uh, about six proctored cases and then you understand the process. It's basically understanding one, two and mm -hmm. looking at the direction mm -hmm. of the arrows. So Helge, you are a very experienced uh, implanter. Um, what is your experience? You have done a lot of proctoring. So what is, what is your special insight in learning to uh, implant this device? Actually, I would fully agree um, what we just uh, talked about. Um, it's very easy, so you um, have to find the perfect position at the annulus. That's uh, the only step where you have to think a little bit afterwards. Uh, the whole procedure um, is more or less um, automatically because you just have to hold the device, release it. There is no jumping down or jumping up. Um, it's a very stable um, release and um, therefore I'm pretty convinced that uh, this valve is not only suitable for ve very experienced um, in, um, centers but also for smaller centers who just start or centers who would um, change um, the system. Since we learned from the registry that it's a very good device to use in all comers, are there any special anatomies or any special patients where you think that it would be an advantage to implant uh, the accurate NEO? I would say that combining low PVL with low pacemaker rate would be especially attractive in patients who, who, who are younger or have heart failure, reduce injection fraction there, it would be especially good. But I think it's uh, good across the range of most uh, TAVI candidates. First, you can add that there are um, 
is good opportunity to treat even complex patients. So for example, horizontal aorta is always a problem to find the perfect position for a valve. That is pretty straightforward with, uh, with this Cymetis device. And also the heavily calcified um, aortic annulus patient um, do very well with the Cymetis device. Uh, so I think it's not only the, the workhorse um, for each and every patient, but also um, the perhaps more complex patients who, would, um, who can, can benefit from this device. Mm -hmm. Maybe one word on uh, pre- and post-dilation. What is your experience on that, since you mentioned that the radial force is not as strong as we know it from other devices? I would recommend to um, pre-dilate um, in cases where uh, we have um, moderate or severe calcification. Um, in order to avoid post-dilatation, I always uh, prefer to have pre-dilatation mm -hmm. and once uh, the, the annulus, uh, the leaflets are prepared, then you can easily implant the valve without any need for post-dilatation. Therefore, I'm pretty liberal with the uh, pre-dilatation uh, with this device. Thank you so much. We learned that the Symmetris Accurate Neo is a very intuitive to use second generation TAVI device and uh, we have already seen in the SAVI uh, TF1000 registry that it provides um, perfect uh, clinical results in uh, daily all comers. Thank you so much.